Hello everyone. Welcome back to Pathology Tutorials. Today, I'm going to talk about skin tuberculosis, also called as cutaneous tuberculosis. We will discuss the clinical features as well as histopathology of the lesions. So let's start. Skin tuberculosis is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis primarily and mycobacterium bovis less frequently. Its incidence is very low compared to the pulmonary tuberculosis. The types of cutaneous tuberculosis are lupus vulgaris, scrofuloderma, tuberculosis cutis verrucosa, tuberculates which include lichen scrofulosorum and papillonecrotic tuberculate. We will be talking about all these entities in the coming slides. Now first is lupus vulgaris. It is the most common form of skin tuberculosis which presents with painful cutaneous skin lesions. This is the clinical picture of the lesion where we can see multiple nodular lesions over the cheek and on the neck. So, this lesion is generally seen in the head and neck area involving nose, eyelid, lips, cheek, ear and neck. It often develops due to inadequately treated pre-existing TB and at the site of BCG vaccination. Dioscopy test is done where the lesion is pressed by using a glass slide to diminish the vascular component of inflammation and the individual nodules appear as yellow brown spots. They appear as the color of apple jelly. So these nodules are also known as apple jelly nodules. Bontuk's test is also positive in such patients. Coming to the histopathology, when the slide is seen under microscope, we see epithelioid cell granulomas with the presence of these Langhans type giant cells. These are the modified macrophages or ep epithelioid cells and uh, gaseous, gaseous necrosis is seen in the dermis. And this lesion is a possibacillary lesion. So very few bacilli are seen in the dermis. The next entity is tuberculosis cutis varicosa. Tuberculosis cutis varicosa most frequently occurs on the extremities as a result of direct inoculation of the pathogen. It is not associated with lymphadenopathy. This point is important to note as lupus vulgaris and scrofuloderma they present with lymphadenopathy but not tuberculosis cutis ferrugosa. The pathogens are hardly ever found microscopically as tuberculosis cutis ferrugosa and lupus vulgaris both are possibacillary forms. This is the clinical picture of the lesion which shows a large wart like lesion over the foot which is indurated in appearance. Coming to the histopathology, as the lesion name is tuberculosis cutis verrucosa, so the epidermis will show marked hyperplasia followed by marked dermal infiltrate in the marked dermal infiltrate along with neutrophilic abscess and third thing is presence of caseating necrosis in the dermis. Then the third entity is scrofuloderma. This is the most common type of cutaneous tuberculosis in children. And it results from direct extension from an underlying tuberculosis focus. For example, in lymph node, bones or lungs to the overlying skin. And there are macrophages, lymphocytes and plenty of acid fast rods seen under the microscope with the help of Z and stain. So this is the clinical picture 
where the patient presents with multiple abscess with discharging sinuses or fistulae and uh, under the microscope we will see ulceration of the overlying epidermis with presence of necrosis caseous necrosis in the dermis along with abscess then comes the tuberculates tuberculates are actually a group of cutaneous disorders which are associated with tb infection elsewhere in the body so we do not see the organism under the microscope with the help of stain and they are detected with pcr methods only this is the clinical picture where we see multiple small red lesions or eruptions over the skin tuberculates could be lichen scrofulosorum where superficial inflammatory reaction is seen at hair follicles sweat ducts and caseation is very rare in such lesions and the second form of tuberculate is papillonecrotic tuberculate which where vasculitis and dermal coagulatory necrosis is seen and it resembles granuloma annulare thank you so much